Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of Wednesday's Reflexology Wisdom. And I've got a great friend of mine, Lee Anthony Taylor, here. Um, and you can see that, in fact, we've got quite a bit in common, not just reflexology, but we both love our guitars. And uh, just, just before we sort of came on air, so to speak, we were having a, a good old chat about what we might do. So uh, anyway, we'll keep that one stum, so it's a surprise for later. Yeah. Um, Lee has developed the most amazing foot chart. I am not the best person to talk about Lee's posters. So I've invited Lee to come on with me for Wednesday's Reflexology Wisdom today. And he is going to talk about this amazing post. Actually, it would be a good idea if I held it up the right way. He's going to talk about this amazing poster here that he's created. And uh, basically, Lee, if I can just say, over to you, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, Wednesday's Reflexology Wisdom. And really just to share the, the, the whole idea about how amazing reflexology is in all its forms, because there's so many wonderful examples out there. And I've been inspired by not only what, what you've been putting out, um, but you know the, the whole way that the, the momentum is being gathered together now to promote reflexology is very exciting. I've been in the business 27, 26 years, nearly 27 years, and uh, it's, it's really starting to gather pace now, which is great. With the coronal zone work, um, if I just give you a very, very potted history, so potted that it's tiny, um, and that is that um, we all learnt about longitudinal zones uh, you know, the Fitzgerald's 10 zones where we were training. And we also learned about Hannah Marquardt's transverse zone. So we learned about the way that the, the body has the lines that run from top to bottom and also from front to back. And what I thought was, when I, after I'd done the training was, well, what about the ones that run from side to side? Because no one seemed to be talking about the movement of energy that would be, exist in three dimensions, if you like, that would go from side to side. So I spent a bit of time ruminating over that and thinking about that. And um, by 1999, it was, I thought, well, I need to be able to now start to work with this energy and to, to actually and try and work you know, with the feet in particular, specifically with that intention in mind of moving energy from the side through the middle to the side. And that's the basis of coronal zone reflex therapy is that it works on the sides of the feet or the middle of the feet to the sides. So it's almost like you open yourself up like a traveling chest. And whatever's on the inside, on the middle of yourself, then goes onto the sides, if you like. And you'll see that from the chart in the moment. We're, we're going to have a, a bit of a shared screen moment. We're going to have a look at a few things. As and you do with Zoom, it's fabulous, isn't it? It is. It is. It's, it's a, a lifesaver. It certainly has been the last couple of years. And, um, and so by working with that on the sides, it essentially gives stagnation nowhere to hide. So you can, shift it, you can shift it through the transverse or the, the longitudinal zones, but through the coronal zone, you have that extra little bit of push, if you like, to, to move stagnation out of the way. And the way that I developed it was I worked with somebody who was clairsentient, which means they're very sensitive to energy movement. And she had no real knowledge of reflexology. And I preferred it that way because what I wanted to do was every time that I work with a particular point on the foot, I get her to register where she felt it in the body. Now I kept every reflexology chart away from her so she had no idea. Uh, and it was a double blind effect. So that essentially when I worked on something, I didn't know what her response was gonna be. So I wrote it down and then I go back and I check it again and I write it down. Then I compare what I got and I found very thorough, that, very that was thorough. consistency with it. And so that took around about four months to do that. And, you know, every time she would come, I would work specifically with her. Um, and then I developed the 72 points. So there's, there's 40 on the inside and 32 on the outside. So on the medial edge, as we'll look at in a moment, there are 40 specific points, if you like. And then on the outside edge, the lateral edge, the pinky side, there are 32 points. And... Um, they what they do is they mirror what you would find on the top of the foot or on the sole of the foot it's just that they're on the side so you capture them from the sides and uh yeah so i mean david if you just hold the chart up for one moment yes. you get in in perspective then the the 
the whole range, if you like, of the points that start from right up at the top, as yep. you'll see, right up at the top of the foot, and they come right down yep. to the base, to the heel. Yep. And then the on, that's it. And then on the um, on the lateral edge, it's the same thing. So they go from the top of the small toe right the way down to the heel as well. So there's what are called crown points, and there are base points. In other words, the highest part of ourselves and the the most fundamental part of ourselves as well. Yes. So it, it ties in energetically with a lot of other the, the other philosophies as well about the, you know the chakras and and uh, and all that sort of those energy centers as well. Yeah. So that's the first bit. And I, I don't know, David, if uh, if there's anything you want to come in on at that point. Well, the thing that I thought that initially, and when we talked about this um, before. You know, uh, when, when you first sent this through, it is so specific. Um, I absolutely love the detail. I love how the fact that you can count the uh, points on this all the way from one to uh, to uh, 40 on the uh, medial edge and all the way from one to 32 on the lateral edge. Um, you've, I, I guess that the, the thing is you've got to have a good sense of um, perspective a distal perspective, so to speak, distance perspective, not distal perspective, um, so that you kind of get the points right. But if you're counting it, then you can sort of work it out anyway. And uh, for yeah. me, there's no good at maths. Even I could do this. So this is... <laughs> See, the way the universe works is we have to, as, as a, the way that we function, a way that our brains function means that we have to have something linear. In other words, we have to say, right, this equates with this. Um, but energy per se doesn't uh, uh, doesn't understand the rules of of linearity. It just exists and it yes. just wants to move. Mm -hmm. So by pinning down those thirty two points on the outside and forty on the inside, essentially what I've done is brought energy from the totally holistic model of non linearity into being linear because we have to find it on the feet somewhere. We have to go somewhere. Yes, um, and. When you look at points one, two, and three, for instance, on the inside edge, where we when we look at the crown point and we look at the pituitary and we look at the hypothalamus, yeah, the distance between them is so minute that people will go, well, how do I know if I'm on the right point or not? Yeah, and the, the point that I want to make there is that you don't have to go into your head to think about it. You just intuit and say, right, if I believe that that's where I am, yes, that's where I am. Yes. And yes. it's in the general area anyway. So yes. it, it's more about intention well, rather than scientific evaluation and saying, right, yes. well, it can only be within this parameter here, you know, within this small space here. Yes. It's actually saying as long as you feel as though you're in the right area with it, that's where you're going to be. That's it. And you were saying to me uh, uh, last week as well when we were talking about this that it's quite easy that if you were to imagine that's a foot and you know that, that oh hang on the heart is just here if you're then approaching the heart from the side that's where it is anyway so you don't actually have to go one two yes. three four, and actually work out where it is yeah. you're there anyway because you can see through where yeah. it's going to be exactly um when i trained i learned that the the ovary testis reflex point for instance was on the lateral edge halfway between the outer ankle bone and the, the back of the heel. So you would sort of do the, the little bit of jiggery-pokery that you did, you did with your fingers, find that centre point, and you'd go in through that middle, uh, that middle of the two. Yes. Well, if you carried on through the middle of the two, onto the ball of the heel, where you've got the centre of the pad of the heel, yes, yes. you also an ovary test is pointing there, and then you'd come out the other side, and essentially, you've still got an ovary test is point there, because you'd have right ovary, left ovary, so you'd have left ovary, you can actually access it that way as well. Through the other way. way. Yeah, yes. so you go the other way. Because energy, like I say, doesn't understand our rules of direction, it just, it wants to move, but it, it encompasses everything, it moves everywhere. Indeed. So, so having abandoned those rules, if you like, I had to bring in rules back into the situation in order to create a 2D diagram of where I thought the points were. Indeed. And it was at that point I realized that, okay, how do we then, 
how do we you know touch the feet how do we go about touching the feet and how do we encourage that energy to move because for me with reflexology there are only two rules one is about connection and the other one's about intention so if you get those two right and in your head you have a belief of where you're going with that everything else follows everything you know everything falls into place with that and so the intention was if i'm going to have energy moving from hit this point to this point here to, to create change within the person then i need to give it a direction i need to give it a flow so i started using these fingers because these are the ones these are the good pointing fingers they are um, good pointing fingers <laughs> pointing fingers and the thing about it is the energy like I say, doesn't understand our man-made constructs. But if I was to go like this, it's very aggressive, isn't it? Absolutely. But if I do that and bend it, that then loses that aggressiveness, but it's still got a direction to it. Mm. So yes. this is what I encourage on people that come on the course in particular, is we don't, we don't work with like hard, brittle fingers and all that kind of thing. We're actually very soft and we make a connected pressure to allow that energy to move and so mm. you, you go on one of the points and we can we use the charts on the course but you can go on one of the points and look at where it is correspondingly on the front or the back of the foot trace it down and then you can make your connection that way then so so there there is a visual thing that's happening with you at the moment lee i don't know you, you probably can't even see it because of the way that zoom's working but for me I've actually just tested this because I've moved my screen and it's still there. You have got these beautiful fractionalized rays of light yeah. that are going right across you. And it's like energy moving all around you in the room. You know, when you get a picture of somebody's yeah. aura, yeah, yeah. it's all around you on this. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's quite fabulous to have, how that you're. <laughs> it's, it's nothing that I'm doing, put it that way. So. <laughs> Maybe it just goes to show the energy is with you, Lee. The energy yes, is with you. If we'd done this on May the 4th, we could have done the joke, couldn't we, really? But, uh... We could have done. <laughs> but, were you, were you okay. just about to show us one of your charts in yes, some detail? What I'll, what I'll do is I'll share the screen now and I'll just give you an idea of how to locate things on the chart because obviously that's what we're talking about today specifically is we're talking about, um, we're talking about this in particular. So when we look at what's called an internal edge so we're talking can you see that okay david that i right? can yes it's beautiful full view that's lovely okay so what we've got when we look at the internal edge essentially we are looking at everything that is on the medial edge of the foot so you imagine you split the person in half and you open them up everything that's on the inside now is translated to front and, and, and back essentially so you've got this ability to move through the body okay yep. <laughs> so point one for instance is going to be your crown point point two pituitary point three hypothalamus and, and so on and so it goes down and you'll notice that within the first 10 points they're bunched incredibly well together but going across there you, get, yep. you start to get the idea of the neckline and the shoulder line for instance yes yes so yes so you know that once you get to about 10, point 10 or point 11, you start to come out the head and you're coming down into the neck and into the shoulders. So it gives you a clue just by looking at everything else in relation to the foot as to where you might be. So there's a lot of information within those first 10 points. As that well. is. But then we start to open up a little bit. And the reason why the dots open up a little bit is because then we're starting to deal with bigger areas of the body. So yeah. a big surface area maybe. Uh, or a, a particular organ or gland, so yep. like the thymus or the or the beginning of the heart reflexes, or um, even the lung reflexes. So when we we divide it up into points one to twenty on this part here, and then at the bottom part here, you can see it opens up still further. Yeah, I was just going to say, even you know, there's an even distance bigger. between. Yes, and and this is because essentially we're then starting to deal with everything from the thoracic cavity down into the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity, and they are big areas. They're big areas to describe. Yes, and what again with other techniques that I've done in the past, the best way to find uh, where energy moves is to go for its energetic center, and its energetic center 
because we're linear thinking, you can actually find from its physical center almost as well. So, and it spirals outwards. From that physical center, it will spiral outwards to cover the whole gland or the whole organ. Yeah. So when we start to get down into the sort of small intestine area here and the, the pelvic region, so we're doing the, um, the genitals or we're yeah. doing the, um, the areas associated with the, the base point, for instance, or the sacrum or the coccyx, yeah. there's going to be a lot more space in between because obviously they occupy a bigger area than you indeed, find indeed. in the brain. So that's, that's the first one. I think that's it for that slide. So I'll take that one off and then I'll put this next one on, which shows the outer edge. Where are we? I think it's on. No. I have to say, while, while you're flicking through this, for me, this just adds a whole new dimension. Um, it really, really does. I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, and I think the thing about it is, is that, um, is it going to be on this one? Yeah, it's on the top here. Uh, yeah, also, obviously, you've got some things that are left-sided and some things that are right-sided. Yeah. So <clears> you'll have, um, even though the liver reflex, for instance, crosses the midline, you're going to get the tip of the liver yeah. on the left foot. Yeah. Now, Lee, I don't know whether you, are you looking at a big picture? Because I can't see a big picture at the moment. Okay. So, hang on. Can you see that? Okay. No, I can only see to the side of your... PDF. I can't see the main image on the PDF. Right. Let me just try it again. Then let me stop, come out, and go back in. Right. Where was I? On? Try that. Is that there going? we go. Yes, I can see big now. There. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. Okay. Lovely. There we go. All right. So now we're looking at the um, external edge, so the lateral side, and even though you've got a difference in height between the small toe and the big toe. Essentially, what you've got is you've got all the information that's contained within the big toe, as you, as you know, is going to cascade out into the four remaining toes. So yeah. you've got everything that's on the lateral edge of the big toe being represented on the lateral edge of the little toe. Ah. Yeah, because if that's zone five there on the edge of the big toe, yes. it's also going to be the edge of the little toe. Right. Because when we do neck points and we go down deep in between first and second toe, essentially what we're doing is we're coming down the side of the head. We are? So we're coming down the side of the head laterally there. Well, this is the same thing. This is coming down the side of the head laterally this way. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to pick up jaw points. You're going to pick up teeth points in particular. The TMJ, all those kind of yep. things are going to yep. be those first, first few points. And then we get to round point four and five, and this starts to then become the articulation of the neck into the shoulder, for instance. Perfect. Because you're moving from the side. So it's, it's yeah. almost as though someone would be shining a light on you. What they would pick up yes. would be everything that, that's going to be captured on the side. Yeah. Now, we know that, again, from our initial training, when we did um, you know, undergraduate training, that we've got the arms and the legs as on the, um, the, the the lateral edge, on that lateral edge. But if you lift them up, you've got everything that's underneath it as well. The axilla, yes. You've got the rib cage, you've got access to all the internal organs by moving laterally to the medial edge through the body. Yeah? yeah. Now, all energy ever wants to do is move, like I've said. So it doesn't just stop once it gets to the medial edge. It carries on. So it'll carry on if that if that organ in particular is the one that needs the attention. So if we're talking about the, the bowel or the liver, it crosses over from one foot to the, the other foot anyway, or even yeah. the heart. Yeah. And so that coronal zone energy is going to move through the one foot, through to the medial edge, capture on the medial edge of the other foot, and carry through to the lateral edge of the other foot. So it just goes in a completely straight line. Yeah. Yeah. That, so that requires then that you use both hands in order to facilitate that movement, because that's your intention. Right. Yeah. So when we get down to the bottom again of the lateral edge, it's the same kind of thing that we talked about on the medial edge, where you've got an opening up going on. Okay. Now, people might think, 
well, doesn't this trace, especially on the medial edge, doesn't this trace the line of the spine? And to a certain extent it does, but what it actually captures, and this was through working with this Claire Sentian uh, client of mine, is it's the center of the body. So it's the center line. It's almost as though if you had a string and you, you allowed that person to form a straight line through mm -hmm. their body, <clears throat> around, it's the center of ourselves. And the spine mm -hmm. sometimes is in front of that center line and sometimes it's behind the center line. And that's what you pick up with a, it's a kind of S shape that you get, the, the idea of that. So if you imagine this, yes, this is, it's almost tracking the line of the longitudinal arch and yes. the, the, the idea of everything connected with the spinal processes. But sometimes it's in front, sometimes it's behind it because it's actually more to do with the, the center and the center of gravity in particular. So, I'll tell you what, this is a CPD course just watching this. It's amazing. <laughs> Absolutely love it, Lee. Now, uh, obviously you are um, best, well, at the moment, at the moment, best known for your uh, men's health CPD. Yeah. But I'm betting you teach this as well. Yeah, and 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 it's interesting. I'll come off the stop share for a minute. I'm just okay. Yeah, on. yeah. Um, the the interesting thing is, I was working with a new client this morning, an 88 year old woman, lovely woman, and she has been subject to what's going on with the health system at the moment, where she's been told, "Come along, and we'll diagnose you." And then we'll leave you for months. Oh gosh! <laughs> and um, she reckons that she fell and, and fractured her hip, oh. and um, and so she went for a, a, a consultation about five days ago, and they, they basically turned around and said, "Well, we could do something, but we from the X-ray it looks like you've got a, a, a hairline fracture of your hip, but we could leave it as well." And this woman's in pain, mm -hmm. so I saw her for the first time this morning. And her left ankle is swollen all around the hip reflexes, around the sacroiliac joint reflexes, and um, which is perfect. The feet are shouting, "There's something wrong here!" Yeah, and and, and from, from a mechanical point of view, I could explain it to her because I said, "Well, obviously, what what's happening here is you're putting your weight through that part of your foot in particular." And it doesn't like it; it's responding in in kind. But then I explained to her about where the reflexes were. And, and uh, we started to do some work and I did some coronal zone points and I, um, I wasn't able to take photographs. Normally I'd like to take a photograph of a before and afterwards, but her ankle in the space of 45 minutes, just by using those coronal points lower down, the sort of 35 to 40 ones, um, had gone down considerably just in 40 minutes. Amazing. Minute. Yeah. So, and it was using very light connective pressure. Yeah. Um, okay. So it's absolutely clear there was nothing lymphatic drainage, as it were, being done through pressure, sweeps, nothing like that. It was purely your coronal yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. And it was it was allowing that. And she felt it as well. She mm. felt it through her knee and also up into her hip. She felt some energy movement going on and, and something which I think you might identify as well called sweet pain. Oh, yes. Yeah. So I like you, that word. It's lovely, isn't it? So that idea of, well, it hurts, but I know that it's doing me okay. Yes. Uh, and with all the wisdom that she brought to the experience as well, it was like, well, I've never known anything like this before, but I'm mm. prepared to carry on with it. You know, I want to carry yeah. on doing it. Yeah. So, but it was the lightest of touches. Um, and, and I suppose, you know, there might be a misconception of thinking, well, unless it really hurts, it's not going to do you any good. Or you have to use such force with it that the force in itself is the thing that makes the difference. But as we know, and from your finger free work, I'm sure as well, what you know is it's not about that. You, you alter your intention to say it's about what we want to see happen, what our intention is to see happen. Yes. And not letting that energy flow. Yeah. 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 And so by applying that light and gentle touch and being a man as well, of course, there's that prior expectation. Well, if it's a bloke, he's going to go in and he's going to be a bit harder with it. Yeah. And I'm pleasantly surprised when when I go in and I'm going, right, okay, this is this is where I'm going to hold the feet. And I go, oh, you sure? Yeah, I'm definitely sure this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> you know, and, and then they, they see the results from it. Ooh. They go, oh, okay. 
I hope that works. I've always said my mantra has always been just give me your feet. Just give me your feet. Um, if, if there's anybody out there that's unsure about, you know, what reflexology is about or what I'm capable of helping them with, uh, and then they immediately see a difference. Um, now, I'll tell you what, Tony, uh, uh, Lee, I really love that mantra about give me your feet. I bet there are loads of people who are watching this now saying, don't know about give me your feet, but tell us where we can buy your charts. So oh. is, is, uh, I'm assuming they're available for sale. Yes, they are. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And they shout, out, shout, out, shout, shout out where we can get them from. And I'll also put a link in the information at the bottom as well. Okay, well, I, I've got a, a, um, a pile of them at home. And um, so I'm selling them myself because I take them on the courses with me. Um, what, it's, what I also have, but it's not available unless you come on the course, is a manual. And that's got a list of, it's about 64 pages, there's a whole list of not only the, the techniques and the points and that you know, everything's broken down, but also a list of conditions that you apply specific points to. So okay. that's the reason why we number them, because then you put the numbers and associate them with the conditions. Um, but as far as the charts are concerned, if they want to write to me, I'll, you know, um, I've got my address. Put your, put your address on it then. Yeah. And then they can find you. And then, then please write to me and um, I'll send them off in the post to you like I did to David. Perfect. And, uh, off we go. Yeah. Lee, it has been an absolute delight having you on Wednesday's Reflexology Wisdom. Um, I know um there is so much information that you've taught us here you're so generous with your knowledge you really are so thank you so much for that um and i wish you all the best and for everybody that's watching stay safe stay well and we'll see you for another episode of wednesday's reflexology wisdom 